welcome to On Deck with Mike Stewart. Welcome to On Deck with Mike Stewart. On this video episode, on this episode, Save Our Oceans, it's going to be dedicated to dolphins and all mammals and species and marine. It's going to be dedicated to marine life. I'm dedicated. I'm dedicated. The marine life is dedicated. We need to save our oceans. We go where our oceans go. We over, we're overfishing them. We're polluting them. We treat the oceans like a giant toilet. And if it doesn't stop, we're going to go straight down the toilet with everything else. You know, there's about 36 dolphin species uh, on this planet. And last time I checked, it was the only one we have. So until then, we better take care of it. So, I mean... Most of the dolphins, they are marine, which means they live in salt water. They live in the ocean or the brackish waters, you know, along the coastline. But, you know, there's a couple of them uh, that live in rivers, um, freshwater streams, things like that. Did you know the largest dolphin is the orca? It can, be, it can grow to over 30 feet. <laughs> wow. And then the smallest dolphin is the Maui dolphin. It just uh, comes in at five feet. You know, they, their appetite or their um, main food supply is uh, fish and squid. And uh, what they use to track each other and their prey, uh, it's called echolocation. So it's a built-in sonar. It just bounces sound waves off uh, the fish that they're hunting, the prey that they're hunting or their other friends and relatives and people in the water, whatever else. And it reveals information like uh, location, size, and shape. The um, echolocating bottlenose dolphin, it can make like a thousand clicking noises per second. I mean, that's incredible. You know, they, uh, they normally live in pods that can number a dozen or more. And when I mean more, I mean I've recorded um, pods, dolphin pods, in the hundreds, possibly in the thousands uh, out in the oceans. I've recorded dolphin ponds, definitely over a thousand. I don't know how many over a thousand, but 100 dolphins in, in one pod. Just amazing. I mean, they're, they, they are intensely social mammals. They communicate by squeaks and whistles and clicks. I mean, people are still trying to figure out, marine biologists are still studying uh, the dolphins' language. Just as humans have a language, dolphins have a language. Topic is still being debated hotly today and scientists all over the world. But they are mammals. They have warm blood and they nurse their young, just like humans. Um, they have more than one mate, like a lot of humans. Uh, they usually just have one baby, uh, a single offspring, uh, when they when they give birth. The uh, the pup, or whatever they're called, the little baby dolphin. They'll stay with their mother for like up to six years. Sometimes that changes depending on the species of the uh, of the dolphin. That's pretty crazy. That's you know. And that's about all humans need to, you know, I think, I think we'd be a much better society if uh, we weaned our young in about six years. <laughs> all right, you're on your own now. <laughs> Make it in this world. You know what I mean? Uh, they are awesome swimmers. I mean, they can go as fast as 18 miles an hour. They love to play and jump up in a boat's wake. They'll leap out of the water. Uh, either just for fun or to communicate or sometimes they do it to get rid of these uh, parasites they get on their backs uh, and a lot of the, even today check it out that you know they are threatened by it obviously their biggest threat is climate change and human driven climate change and just humans you know man is their biggest threat 
they've been hunted for their meat and blubber. I mean, uh, even today, they're still being caught accidentally in commercial fishing nets. I mean, they got to come up, you know, regularly to breathe. So they get entangled in these nets, you know, and then they drown. You've got warming ocean temperatures, food sources moving from their environment into deeper, cooler water. So, you know, it's not in their area anymore. I mean, can you imagine if you had to go for groceries and uh, every time you had to go to the grocery store, the grocery store was further and further and further away until pretty soon it's like you're gone for like a month at a time. Like, where have you been? I haven't seen you in like four months. Oh, I went to go get some food. <laughs> I mean, that's what they got to face. That, that's what they're dealing with here. So we got to do our part, folks. We got to save these oceans. 70% of the world's population relies on the ocean for food, you know, for seafood. So if the oceans go down the toilet, you know, if the oceans aren't capable of sustaining sea life, then 70% of the world's population needs to look for other food. You know, where do you think they're coming? Yeah, they're gonna leave the sea, they're gonna stop fishing, and they're gonna start hunting. And they're gonna start going to all the animals on the planet. And the cows and horses and dogs and cats and anything and everything. Yeah, because people are gonna keep eating. They have to eat. So if we're not sustaining them with our uh, sea life, and the only way to sustain people's uh, uh, food source in the sea, you know, is by conserving fishing grounds. If you're not aware, the big uh, North Atlantic Cod Moratorium, I think it's been like 20 years. You know, those fishing grounds still haven't rebounded after 20 years where they've banned commercial fishing. The North Atlantic Cod has still not come back to numbers to open up the fishing uh, again. You know, can you go with not eating food for 20 years? So, I don't think so. so. We've got to do, we've got to be proactive. You know, we've got to save our oceans. You know, we got to save the rainforest. There's all our stuff we got to save. Uh, we got to save ourselves. You know, by saving the ocean, saving the rainforest, and protecting our environment, we are essentially saving ourselves. So... If you just want to consume and gobble up all the Earth's natural resources, then go right ahead. And you're going straight into your own uh, grave. So, it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> so, on that note, I'll get off my soapbox. I just wanted to put this out there. It's been something swirling around in the back of the, spinning around in my head and my mind for the last uh, few weeks. And I thought, you know what? I just want to make a video to, um, you know, dedicate it. For all those who love our oceans. So, there you go. I hope you enjoy. And if you do, remember, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my video channel. You subscribe to my videos, boom, hit the bell, and then you're going to get all the good, great content I put out every week. I'm a big supporter of Ocean Conservancy. Uh, there's an actual uh, charity. It's called Ocean Conservancy and also a big supporter of Save Our Seas. So after watching this video, look below and in the description below this video, there'll be a link to help support our oceans. So you can check out Ocean Conservancy and Save Our Seas. I mean, the ocean is the center of who we are. I mean, I don't care if you've never even seen the ocean, you're touched by it every single day. It makes half the air both you and I breathe every single day, the food we eat and the water we drink. I mean, you can't help just but be inspired by the ocean. From those majestic whales videos, you, you always see the jaw-dropping waves, uh, the beautiful coral reefs, sea turtles. I mean, the ocean just captures my heart and soul like nothing else on this whole planet. So I'm doing what I can to help fight and protect it. And I hope you'll join me. Work with me and help restore the Gulf of Mexico. We'll join together with the Ocean Conservancy to help their project to restore the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, it's one of those places, it's astoundingly beautiful. It's so, it's so diverse. It's just teeming with life, as you can see from some of these videos. With all the, the sharks, uh, whale sharks, whale sharks. I mean, those are awesome to see. Uh, bottlenose dolphins jumping all out of the water. Uh, sea turtles all over the place. It's just one of the most staggeringly productive places on this whole planet. 
I mean, it's home to fish, coral, whales, sea turtles, dolphins, and just thousands and thousands of bird species. And it's a major uh, drive. It's a major engine for our local national economy. So species like oysters, shrimp, crabs, I mean, that's the fishing industry. That's the Gulf fishing industry right there. What happens when all that's gone away? You're talking about thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people out of work. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, probably millions of people that won't be able to eat it anymore. For about like 87 million people, they call the Gulf of Mexico home. I mean, it's a way of life. It's got its own local cultures, like in Louis, South Louisiana, down the bayou. I mean, that is a very special culture, very close and dear to my heart uh, and the uh, Cajun community. 